Hello everyone, I hope you all are having a good day. What we're going to do today in this video is we're going to go over a kinetics problem. This is out of the Hibbler textbook, um, so 14th edition of the dynamics book, number 1732. And it's going to be one of the rigid body kinetics pro problems. So we've got this cart here, center of mass is a G, and a force P is being applied, and P is equal to 300 newtons, so 3 there. Um, and the mass of the cart is 60 kilograms. So what we want to do is determine the reactions at both the wheels A and the wheels at B. We also want to find the acceleration of the cart. All right. Now, when you're doing this kind of problem in the textbooks, they usually have it separated out where you have translation, rotation, and then you have general plane motion. General plane motion is a combination of translation and rotation. Right, so if we look at this problem, what we have is just translation, right? Because this cart is just going to move to the left as it's pulled along. Okay, so there's no rotation in this problem. So that's important to realize. Okay, now next thing we want to do is draw our free body diagram. So here's our box, going to represent that cart, and then for our forces, we obviously have the 300 newtons here. It's a 30 degree angle. Here is G, right? So what should we put at G? The weight, right? We know the mass is 60 kilograms. So we're going to put the weight here. So it's going to be 60 times 9.81. And then we've got the wheels here, so at A and B. So obviously these are touching the surface, so there's going to be that normal force acting up at both of those locations. So we got in A and then in B. Okay. And the in A and the in B, that's going to basically account for both wheels at A, both wheels at B. All right. And now let's go ahead and put our distances on here. So this is 0 0.08. Here to here is 0.3, and then here to here is 0.3. Actually, this is 0.2. All right, so 0.2 there. Um, and then lastly, from A, we've got this 0.4 up to the force here. So now we get 0.4 meters. Okay, so that puts all of our forces on there. Now, the next thing that I always put on these diagrams when I'm dealing with kinetics of rigid bodies is I always put the accelerations. And you'll see why in just a minute. So the acceleration we're going to have, since this is pulling to the left, is just going to be something going to the left, right? So let's just call this AG. All right, so it's just the acceleration of the center of the cart at G. That's all that is. Okay, so this is not a force, right? It's an acceleration. That's why I do the dashed line. Put it as a different color so it's obvious it's not a force. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is look at our force equations. All right, so let's look at the x direction. The cart's moving to the left, so I'm going to say to the left's positive. And then we're just going to pull off the uh, forces in the extraction. So obviously I have 300 cosine 30. It's going to be going to the left. So that's positive 300 cosine 30. And then that needs to equal the mass times the acceleration in the x direction. Right? Because remember, we're going to have that. And usually this is going to be the acceleration of g in the x direction. All right, it's hard to see, but you can put a g x, or sometimes it'll be a bar x, where the bar indicates g. So however you want to denote it. Okay, so the mass is going to be 60 from right here, and then we're going to have a g, and I called it a g here, so let's just call a g there. So with this, I can solve for a g, and we get 4.33 meters per second squared. All right, well that answers this question right here. 
of what is the acceleration of the cart. That is the acceleration of the cart, all right? Because G is moving to the left um, with this acceleration value. Okay, so we found one of our answers. Now I need to find NA and NB. Okay, so I have two more unknowns, I need two more equations. So let's look at the Y equation for the forces and see what we can get with that. Up's gonna be positive. So I have 300 sine 30 going up, so that's positive. And then we've got weight, which is going down, so it's negative. And then I've got a positive NA and a positive NB. And that would need to equal, if we look at our equation, M times AGY. All right. Now, do I have an acceleration in the Y direction on this problem? No. All right, because it's just moving to the left. So there is no up or down motion. So that means here we would have mass of 60, and then your acceleration in the y direction would be zero. All right, and again, it's because there's no vertical motion. Okay, so that's gonna go to zero. Now let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit. Uh, we combine these terms here, you get negative 438.6 plus NA plus NB equals zero. So I still have two unknowns here, can't solve yet, so let's just call this equation one. And now we need another equation. So our next equation is going to be a moment equation. And the easiest place to take the moment about, or at least the point I picked, was point A. You can also pick point B, it doesn't matter. Um, I picked A, all right? But picking the moment at A, we get rid of this unknown in A, all right? So it reduces the number of unknowns in our equation. Now for the moment equation, the general equation for a moment when we're looking at these rigid body kinetics problems will be I bar alpha plus MAG times D, okay? And this is, like I said, the generic equation. So this term right here is for any rotation we may have. This term here is for translation. Okay. So let's go ahead, let's look at the left side. So I need some of the moments uh, due to the forces about A. So we're just gonna find moments about point A, just like we always do here. So let's look and see what we've got. So point A is down here. Right, it's like right there, that location. And I wanna look at all the forces that do not go through A. So let's look at NB first, right? NB is going to produce a counterclockwise moment, right? Because it's pushing up about point A and the distance there is 0.5. So I'm gonna have a positive NB times 0.5. And this is meters, by the way. Next, I've got weight. Now, the weight is pushing down, right? So down is going to be a clockwise moment. So that one's going to be negative. So we'll have negative 60 times 9.81. And then the distance here will be 0.3. Okay, so now we got that. And then over here, for the 300, I've got two force components, right? I've got this one here going up that's gonna have a moment. So that's 300 sine 30, because it's the vertical component. And is that one gonna be positive or negative? What do you think? Hopefully you said negative, right? Because it's pushing it up, right? It's gonna go clockwise. So it'll be negative. And then the distance we need is this distance right here, which is 0.08. All right, and then lastly, we have the X component of that force, which is right here. So that's 300 cosine 30. And then distance is 0.4. And that one is going to be a positive moment because it's gonna make it go counterclockwise. 
So I'll put a plus there. Okay, so these are the moments created by the forces that we had. And now we're going to go to the right side. So remember this term here is for rotation. Do I have any rotation here? No, I don't have an alpha here. So this first term will go to zero anytime you have a translation only problem. So that's going to leave us with the MAD term right here. Now remember the A is the acceleration of the center of mass G. Okay, and basically what we're doing here, if you look, we have M times A, which is like a force, and we're multiplying it by a distance. So all we're doing is essentially finding a moment that's created by the acceleration of G. And that's why I've always put it on this diagram, because it makes it easy to see what distance you should be using and what direction um, it should be going, right? Is it positive or negative? So let's look at that. So the mass is going to be 60. And then we've got AG, which was 4.33. That's meters per second squared. And then D is just going to be the distance to A. All right. So that perpendicular distance to A. And if you look, I didn't draw it on here, but there's the point 0.3 right there. So from here to here is point 0.3. So that will be D. Okay, and then just like a regular moment, you need to see if it's positive or negative. All right, so this is pointing to the left. That is like a counterclockwise rotation. So we're going to have positive. Okay. And then that gives us our equation. NB is the one unknown, so we can solve for NB now. And if we simplify this, we get 0.5 NB minus 84.657 equals 77.94. All right, so NB then will be 325.2 Newtons. All right, and this is for both wheels at B. So if you wanted it per wheel, you would divide by two. And then now I still want NA. So remember we had this equation up here. So let's use that. So we got the negative 438.6 plus NA plus NB, which is 325.2, equal to zero. So NA then is going to be 113.4 Newtons. And there we have it. So we found our two uh, forces here, NA and B. And then we found our acceleration of the cart at G. All right, so that's how you do a translation only problem when you're looking at the kinetics problems for rigid bodies. So the key thing here, the thing most people mess up on is this right here. So remember, if you put the acceleration of G on your diagram, this part is a lot easier, okay? So all you're basically doing here is finding a moment that's created by the acceleration of G. Okay, so hopefully you found that one helpful, and I will see you guys next time. Y'all have a great rest of the day.